I really like circling back on a product after I've been using it a while. And I've been using the Apple Watch Ultra pretty much every day for well over 100 days now. So how is this $800 smartwatch with a titanium body and a sapphire lens holding up after all this time? Well, in this video, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about durability, all the details of the Apple Watch Ultra, and a few tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way. But we'll also go into the things that I've found very annoying about this watch. This is my Apple Watch Ultra review after 100 days. You don't have a ton of time, that's fine. You know, I totally respect that. My quick takes are that the Apple Watch Ultra watch body has held up extremely well for trail running, biking, mountain biking, uh, lap swimming, open water swimming, all the things that I like to do. And I found the GPS and heart rate data extremely accurate. And as an everyday smartwatch, I think this watch is hard to beat. But notice, you know, I said smartwatch there and not GPS watch or, you know, every single watch on the market. And if you're coming from a previous Apple Watch, and as long as you're okay with the massive size of the Apple Watch Ultra, I do think that you're gonna love the bright screen and the extra buttons and the extra battery life. But if you're used to something different, like a Garmin or a Koros or a Polar or you know any similarly endurance focused watch, then I think that you might find the Apple Watch Ultra lacking a little bit when it comes to tracking your favorite endurance activities. And even after the improvements in battery, you still might find it a bit disappointing. But we're gonna dive into all of that in a ton of detail, starting with durability and how this watch has held up for me over the past few months. Now the Apple Watch Ultra is large. You know, is it large and in charge? Uh, I don't know, uh, but it's a 49 millimeter titanium case. Unlike other Apple Watches, the first generation of this Apple Watch Ultra doesn't really have any options for other sizes or watch body materials. You get the titanium watch body and the sapphire lens. And the lens does have this absolutely ridiculous 2000 nit bright retina display. And it, it's extremely bright. It's twice as bright as the brightest watches that I've tested on this channel. But Apple picked this titanium material because it's a lightweight and durable material. And after 100 days, I have to say, you know, I don't see any sort of scratches or nicks or anything like that in the watch body itself. And the screen is also looking good. It's made of that sapphire material, which is one of the hardest materials, you know, after diamond. Uh, this little device checks the conductivity of the material to see if it's using real sapphire. It's just like a diamond checker. And you can see that it is indeed using real sapphire. And this watch body, it weighs in at 61 grams. Now that's 61 grams plus whatever strap you end up picking out. And that's one of the choices that you will have to make when you're buying the Apple Watch Ultra, which watch band to choose. And I actually had a really hard time with this decision. I ended up going with the trail loop. It's a nice lightweight woven nylon band with a Velcro closure. It has this little tab here so you can pull it for quick adjustments. But I've since picked up all of the watch bands here because I'm planning on making a separate video going into detail about each one, hoping that the video will kind of help you through that decision process. But real quickly, I will say that the trail loop is still probably my favorite for most daily activities. For example, when I'm running, it's the fastest band for quickly tightening a touch just for a more accurate heart rate tracking. And it's also the lightest and the most comfortable in my opinion. And to make things more complicated, uh, I kind of think that people should get either the Alpine loop or the ocean band because there's just more titanium parts to them and they seem like they'd be a little bit better value than the trail loop, which is, you know, it's basically a nylon and Velcro strap. Uh, remember, you know, each of these watch bands cost $100 each if you wanna buy them separately from Apple. And, you know, I don't wanna spoil my upcoming watch bands video, uh, but I've had really good luck with some of the Amazon knockoff watch bands. Obviously, they're not made with titanium, but you can get some additional watch band options for, you know, quarter of the price. But I do have to admit that it's nice that Apple has made the Apple Watch Ultra compatible with all of those other 45 millimeter watch band options that are on the market. And there are a ton of other third party watch band options that are on the market if you're looking for that kind of thing. 
Now, if you're familiar with Apple Watches and you take a first look at the Apple Watch Ultra, the first thing that might jump out at you is the new action button. It's an additional button on the Apple Watch Ultra and it's bright orange. And it's also customizable. You can actually customize it to do different actions right within the settings app on the Apple Watch Ultra itself. And if it's set to workout, the action button will pull up the last type of workout that you've done. And then within the workout itself, the action button will be used as a split button. But instead of split, uh, Apple prefers to call them segments. But action buttons can also be set to jump to the stopwatch functionality, set waypoints, backtrack, switch to the dive mode, switch it over to the flashlight mode. But there's also something called shortcuts and you can kind of make any kind of shortcut that you want. You need to do it on your iPhone phone, but then it'll perform that action when pressed. So for example, if you want your action button to pull up Spotify, you could do that, or even do something like uh, listen to music and perform one of those Shazam things that recognizes music, which is pretty cool. So for me personally, uh, I've kind of been going back and forth with the action button a bit. I first had the action button set to workouts, but I found that I was accidentally starting workouts from time to time. So I ended up switching it to just the basic flashlight functionality. And then more recently, I ended up switching back to workouts for that action button. And I flipped the orientation of my watch around to avoid those accidental button taps. And I think flipping the orientation of the watch at least helps a little. It's hard to say for sure, but if you guys are having similar problems, give that a try. And over the last 100 days or so, Apple has also added something called Precision Starts. It's in Settings, Workouts, kind of scroll to the middle here and enable it. And now when you actually start a workout, it won't start up immediately. It'll actually wait and acquire those GPS satellites and it'll start an activity when you swipe to the right and hit the start icon, or you can just hit that action button again to start your workout. And that little nav icon spinning at the top left means that it's looking to lock onto GPS signal. Waiting for a good GPS signal just means that your GPS track for those first few minutes of your run will be more accurate. And personally, I like it. And if you don't have this enabled, I'd probably recommend considering it. Now I mentioned this before, but over the last hundred days or so, I've found the GPS accuracy of this watch to be exceptional. The Apple Watch Ultra has dual band GPS, meaning it can connect to multiple types of satellite systems at the same time to improve accuracy. But I've reviewed a number of watches on this channel with dual band GPS, and I've kind of come to the conclusion that just having it doesn't mean that you're gonna get accurate GPS tracks. I would say that Apple and Garmin are both doing something special here, something in addition to dual band GPS that are making their GPS tracks really have a lot more accurate results. Really quickly here, while we're talking about data accuracy, I did test the Apple Watch Ultra against an EKG style chest strap, which is of course, you know, I'd say the most accurate way to track your heart rate. And the Apple Watch Ultra did really well. And as with all wrist-based optical heart rate monitors, it does take a second to kind of lock on to your heart rate and then it's good to go. And heart rate accuracy is gonna be dependent upon which sport you're actually performing. So for example, there's no wrist-based optical heart rate monitor that would do well while playing handball or something crazy like that. It's just too hard to find and lock on to a heartbeat with all the other erratic motion going on at the wrist in that sport. And I don't actually play handball, uh, but swimming is another sport that can be a little bit tricky for optical heart rate monitors. Now I typically find testing heart rate monitors while running to be a good judge of quality just because it's challenging for watches, but it's not impossible. And Apple has continued to make improvements on the running activity type since the release of this watch. With the latest iteration of Watch OS, your Apple Watch can now detect when you're on a track or when you arrive at a track or even when you leave a track. It'll present you with a new track mode screen, allowing you to pick a lane and allowing the GPS plots to dramatically improve. In fact, if you actually zoom in far enough here, you'll notice that the GPS track gets locked onto the lane that you're actually in. And over the past few months, I've actually been testing out a ton of different tracks to test this feature. So far, you know, Apple has nailed every single one of them. In fact, Apple doesn't just detect the track, it also detects the number of lanes of the track that you're at, which absolutely blows my mind. I have no idea how their you know, image recognition algorithm can pull out that level of detail 
and add that particular track information to their database. But it seems to always work as far as I can tell. Uh, and I have a full video talking about this new auto track detection feature. If you do want to learn more about it, I'll leave a link to it up here. But Apple also released a feature called Race Routes, which lets you race yourself or your previous attempts at the same route. And you don't have to make the route or download it or anything like that. Apple just picks up the fact that you've run this route multiple times and it'll start presenting it to you as a possible route. Again, I have another full video on that particular feature if you want to learn more about it and I'll leave a link to it up here. And Apple has also improved its swimming activity type. Apple watches, of course, have always been able to detect the distance that you've swam, but now it'll also detect when you're using a kickboard and it'll count that into your swim total. Before it didn't do that, you just kind of were left without that information. And I'd say swimming with the Apple Watch and the Apple Watch Ultra for that matter is pretty good at this point. I just switch it into swim mode and kind of forget about it while I'm doing my workout. And it ends up doing pretty well. Uh, I do wish it had some sort of drill mode because that's the one thing that could kind of mix up and end up presenting you with the incorrect distance. You know, drill mode, you might be swimming with one arm uh, and not the other and the Apple Watch would mix that up. Now I've also been doing a few open water swims with the Apple Watch Ultra. Uh, we just got back from Hawaii and I should say that it held up well against all of the sand and salt water. Uh, no major issues there. Uh, and I know I shouldn't have, uh, but I've swam open water with each of the different watch types. And I haven't lost my Apple Watch Ultra to the bottom of the ocean yet. Not that you should risk it. Uh, if you do a lot of open water swimming, I think the ocean band makes by far the most sense to pick up. And that ocean band also makes the most sense if you're into scuba diving. It's not something that I do personally, but the Apple Watch can also work as a standard recreational dive computer. It just detects the amount of pressure and it determines the amount of feet that you are underwater. Not a ton of detail here, but it might work if you're kind of a recreational diver. Now I've only gotten lost with the Apple Watch Ultra once in Grant's Pass. I was out for a run and I kind of got lost on the opposite side of the river, but I had dropped a waypoint at the rental house where we were staying and I was able to use the Compass app to at least direct me towards where I should be going. Is it as good as Garmin with their color, detailed roadmaps? Uh, no, I don't think so, uh, but at least it was able to get me going in the right direction. Now when it comes to sound quality, the Apple Watch Ultra has a three microphone array that can really help cancel out wind noise to increase audio quality. And I haven't had any issues answering or making calls with this device. But there's also a safety siren piece here, which I haven't had to use, knock on wood, uh, but I did test it out in the woods. Now, if we take a quick look inside the Apple Watch, we see that the battery is a 2.1 watt hour battery compared to the 1.19 found in the Series 8. So it's almost double the size here. Now, the battery is in a place that isn't easy to change. Uh, don't be fooled by these four screws that are on the back of the watch here. The battery is almost impossible to gain access to. You basically have to peel off the front display to get to it. And that lithium ion battery will degrade over time, but currently I'm seeing a solid two days of battery life just in my everyday normal usage. And I do about an hour of battery intensive GPS activity per day. And without changing any settings, the Apple Watch Ultra battery can go for about 12 hours of GPS activity, but it actually has two settings additionally that can actually toggle and extend the range of that battery. It's called normal low power mode, and it'll extend it to about 17 hours, which is conveniently the exact amount of time that an Ironman allows for you to finish a full Ironman event. And then there's one more setting called low power reduced accuracy. The name just rolls off your tongue. But in that mode, the GPS usage is reduced to one reading every two minutes, and the watch can go up to 60 hours on a single charge, which is pretty impressive. And I'd say it's probably more ideally used in some sort of uh, two-day hike versus some sort of ultra running event. And the reason is because with the reading only once every two minutes, you're gonna get some very mixed up distances when trail running on lots of switchbacks and tight turns. 
No doubt that some people will be ecstatic with the new larger battery life when compared to other Apple Watches, but I think some people will still find it a bit disappointing. I think the 2000 nit bright display is probably to blame here, but when you're comparing the Apple Watch Ultra to a non-AMOLED display, the difference in battery life is pretty shocking. On my other wrist here, I'm wearing the Garmin Enduro 2. It's a watch that's designed for ultra runners, and instead of a battery life of about 30 hours, where you might see on an Apple Watch, the Enduro 2 can go for something like 30 days. Now, my second big complaint with the Apple Watch Ultra is that yes, the size really is big, but it's not the 46 millimeter watch body itself that's the problem. The watch is also very thick. Now here's the Apple Watch Ultra in the Apple Watch Series 7, just as a comparison on both of my wrists for reference. Uh, and my wrist size is about 165 millimeters. Uh, I have pretty small wrists. They're still manly wrists, they're just small wrists, small manly wrists. But the Apple Watch Ultra also sticks up higher on my wrist. It's about a 14.4 millimeter thickness or about 50% thicker than the other Apple Watches on the market. So you're gonna hit it against things more often and you're probably gonna notice it catching on sleeves when you're putting on jackets and things like that. It's just a big watch and I'm not sure that the square shape is doing it any favors at all. Now my next big thing and one thing that I found extremely annoying about the Apple Watch Ultra is just accidental button presses. It happens all the time. I have tried to flip the watch and change the orientation like I mentioned before so that I don't hit that action button as often when you're bending your wrist, but it's still a massive touchscreen here right on the top of the display. And I can't even count the number of times that I felt a tiny vibration coming from my wrist because the timer had accidentally been tapped and turned on and then set all the way off by accident. And while that's annoying, I've actually had two occurrences when I was out running in the rain and my jacket has somehow flipped the watch over to the end screen and ended a run unintentionally, meaning that I lost all of my running data for both of those particular runs. A uh, next thing that I'll mention, uh, maybe just a warning for cyclists, is that this watch will do basic GPS tracking, but I definitely wouldn't describe it as a true cycling watch. And I think most cyclists know that. There are apps that will definitely help, but natively, you know, this watch isn't gonna connect to power meters or cycling radar units or anything like that. And then lastly, uh, yes, you know, the Apple Watch Ultra is a great device. It may be the best smartwatch on the market, sure, um, but it is 100% locked down to an iPhone and iOS. And I, I do think that technically you could set one up using an iPhone or if a family member was able to set up your Apple Watch as kind of a family member plan. But realistically, you really are stuck with an iPhone if you're gonna use an Apple Watch. And keep in mind that something like worldwide, the iPhone only accounts for about 30% of the market share. So a huge percentage of the market can't even use this device at all. So. You know, after all of those annoyances, uh, would I recommend the Apple Watch Ultra? I think so, I think I would, um, with some hesitation, one being that it is a big device. If it's too big for you, it's definitely just not gonna work. That's kind of a non-starter there. Two, I think if you're a true endurance athlete, regardless of all the marketing hype, if ultra running is really your thing, then the Apple Watch Ultra probably isn't the best option for you. Not that it couldn't work, you could set the Apple Watch Ultra into that low power reduced accuracy mode, but you're gonna lose GPS accuracy on the trails, and you're probably gonna see misreadings of distance, I'd say as much as 10%. And especially because trails have tons of switchbacks and the Apple Watch Ultra is only taking those readings every two minutes. Same thing with an Ironman, can it technically make it through an Ironman? Yes, absolutely. If you change the battery mode to that normal low power mode, you'll get 17 hours of GPS use. But again, you know, at this point, wouldn't you rather have something that's designed a little bit more for the task? Like for example, the Garmin Forerunner 955 will go 20 to 30 hours. And it's really designed to do triathlon. So you could in theory finish an Ironman and still see something like 50% battery life left on that watch. But for me, you know, it all comes back to that decision for that everyday buyer. If we ignore all the Apple marketing material, all the marketing hype, showing this watch climbing to the top of a mountain or crossing a desert. No, the Apple Watch isn't designed for the most extreme situations, but yes, it is the most durable, the most functional, the most beautiful smartwatch, in my opinion, that Apple has ever made. And I do think that it warrants that higher $800 price tag. And I think that if you are at all interested in the Apple Watch Ultra, 
is definitely worth picking up. But those are just a few of my thoughts after having used this watch for 100 days. And I'd much rather hear from you guys, hear your opinions on the Apple Watch Ultra. What do you guys think? Is it something that you would recommend? Is it something that you're considering? I'm happy to keep this conversation going down in the comments section below. But either way, Apple Watch Ultra or not, be sure that you're getting out there, swimming, biking, running, rinsing, and repeating it all over. And we will see you guys on the next one.